Hi everyone, welcome to Cooking with Becky. Please follow me and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a delicious recipe and head over to Facebook on, on follow me on Living Low Carb with Becky. Today's recipe, snickerdoodles, the low carb way. All right, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to mix together in a handheld um, mixer. We are going to mix together six tablespoons of softened butter and one third cup of granular sweetener of choice. Some people like Swerve, some people like Lakanto. Please make sure that it is keto or low carb approved. Okay, here we go. As you'll see, that did not take long. I will raise this here in a minute. But next, we are going to go ahead. We want, we're trying to get a fluffy texture. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to add baking powder, cinnamon, and xanthan gum, or an optional ingredient. Let me tell you about that. So in, in this cup, I have a half of a tablespoon, guys, half of a tablespoon of cinnamon. I have half a teaspoon of baking powder. I do not have half of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. I am doing the optional alternative. I am doing one tablespoon of unflavored gelatin powder. You can buy unflavored gelatin at your local store. This is Kroger brand. There are no carbs in it. The difference between xanthan gum and gelatin, xanthan gum is gonna give it a softer texture and it's gonna help it rise a little bit more. Uh, the unflavored gelatin, which is what I'm using, will still help it rise a little, not as much, but it's gonna make it a chewier cookie and I wanted chewy cookies. So I opted for the gelatin. So we're gonna add that in and continue to mix for just a moment. Didn't even know my fridge opened behind me, sorry about that. In a moment, when I um, pause in a minute, I will definitely make sure that you don't have to listen to that the entire time. To this now, we are going to add our vanilla and egg. And for vanilla, you want one teaspoon of vanilla. Trying to find my teaspoon. And I have a brand new thing of vanilla. Guys, please make sure to use pure vanilla extract. When you use uh, an imitation, it is loaded with carbs and loaded with sugar. Pure vanilla extract has none of that. No carbs, no sugar, just vanilla. So please use that and let the sweeteners help you with the rest of it. So one teaspoon of vanilla, making sure I have it in there, and one egg. And then I'll tell you the next steps after that. Okay, it shouldn't take too long. Okay, what is going to happen now is the perfectionist in me is going to keep blending um, offline for just a moment. Then to that, we're going to add our almond flour. They prefer blanched almond flour. I will just tell you, I have plain almond flour. Uh, blanched costs a little bit. First of all, almond flour is expensive. Those of you guys that know this about um, cooking, it costs a little bit more. I'm not gonna buy a bag of 
blanched when I really use it. All that this really means is that my cookies are going to be a little bit browner because we didn't take any stripping of the color of the natural almond. So almonds are naturally brown, so the flour inside the bag is more of a golden texture. So instead of having a pure white cookie, I'm just gonna have more of a brown cookie and that is fine. So at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take two and a half cups of blanched or regular, please use whatever you have in your pantry, don't go special shopping for this. Two and a half cups of blanched almond flour, I'm gonna add it a half a cup at a time, incorporate, half a cup, incorporate until all two and a half cups are in there and then I will see you after I am done blending. Okay, so we now have a beautiful, beautiful dough. Show that to you, nice and thick, ready to go. And we also have in here our dipping. We have one and a half tablespoons of a granular sweetener of choice. By the way, I use Swerve Everyone, um, dog approved, diabetic friendly, gluten free, no glycemic index um, overload. Um, to me, it's mine, but I do know there's others. So anyways, uh, with that said, one and a half tablespoons of granular sweetener of choice and one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. And you'll see that the cinnamon is on the darker side, nice and cinnamony. I'm just gonna show you what we are going to do and then I'm going to make 12 of them. You're gonna use a middle size, medium size, guys. I should be a little bit easier with my speaking. You're gonna make a cookie scoop. So you're not gonna use a normal size cookie scoop, but you're not gonna use a large one. If you have a set of three, you're gonna go with the middle. You get it rounded into a ball and you roll it in the cinnamon sugar mix. I'm hoping you can see me do just one because then I'm gonna do 12. Then you flatten it with your hand. It will crack a little bit until you have a cookie shape. And I will be back to show you all 15. Okay, so I have made them all. By the way, they make 12, not 15, and I even knew that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show them to you real quick. What you wanna make sure, try to do it like this, is once you've flattened them with your hand that they're all about the same thickness, you will see some cracks on some of the edges they're supposed to be that way. So it took me like one and a half sheets. So I'm gonna put these in the oven really quickly. Let me set this back up to you. Now it says 15 minutes. If you've ever been with a cooking with life with me before, I always say to go under. You can always go up to 15, but what if you get to 15 and they're burnt because everybody's ovens heat differently. Even though it says 15, start at around 11 and then check. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do six minutes and then flip because I also like to make sure that everything is heated evenly. And I'll go over the nutrition facts with you. Okay, so while they are baking, I am so looking forward to them. So ingredients, really quickly. Um, well, the, the ingredients will be in the recipe, so I'll just let you know kind of how I did this. So you take the butter and you take the sweetener and you blend them. Once you're done with blending the butter and the sweetener, you add in the cinnamon, the xanthan gum, or unflavored gelatin. I'm gonna come back to that at the end. Baking powder. Uh, and the granule, oh, we already did the sugar. So you, you add those three, blend them in. Then you add in the vanilla and you add in the egg, blend them in. And then you add in the almond flour, they prefer blanched, if you want a whiter looking cookie. If you've already got almond flour in your cupboard, which is what my situation was, and it's that golden brown, that's fine. It's gonna taste the same, it's just gonna be a golden brown color. So two and a half cups of almond flour, a half of a cup at a time. Then using a medium scoop, I wanna say they were golf ball size. If, if you don't have a scoop, start about golf ball size. What I did is I made all 12 cookies so that they were exactly the same size first. So since I already had the parchment paper laid out on the pan, I scooped them all out and then I mixed a couple where a couple were a little bigger and smaller so they were uniform. Then I circled them into a ball, rubbed them through the cinnamon sugar mix 
and then which is one and a half tablespoons of granular sweetener of choice and then one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon then i put it on the pan and then when i was done i flattened them all so that way they were all uniformly done there will be some cracking but that's kind of what makes the snickerdoodle cool it says bake for 15 and um i started at 11 it may take 15 but i'm always earing on the safer side okay you want to remove them when they start to turn golden. Now mine are already golden, so I'm gonna remove mine when mine start to turn darker than they are currently. And I think that's why they want the blanch, to be honest, but I know what color my almond flour is. I'll take it out when it's a little darker. And then let them sit 10 to 15 minutes if you wanna enjoy a warm cookie, which I will totally be doing, and then enjoy. Now, it has 139 calories in a cookie, which is not bad because they're big, guys. They're big. Your carbohydrates are five total if you're counting total carbs, but because of the two fibers in the um, two grams of fiber, that brings you down to three net carbs, which is great. Protein is at five and fat is at 17. So there's the facts it will be in the description it will be in without a link guys i am so sorry there is no link for this one i kind of merged some recipes and actually becky fight it so um what you'll need to do is click on it hold if you're on a tablet or a phone to click copy paste it into a document so you can print or if you're on a computer you can just print from there but i will have the recipe down in the description and i will see you when the cookies are made all right, so the cookies are done. I just want to show you one on a plate as it's sliding up. Sorry about that. And let's do a taste test first. Oh, they look so good. That was really good, guys. Mm -mm. I love the chewiness, the texture of it. I took a little too big of a bite. I what I wanted to tell you earlier, so those are great. You guys are going to love them. What I wanted to tell you earlier, it's a lot of recipes call for gelatin to help with the chewiness. And if you look up unflavored gelatin on Amazon or whatever, you get a big bag and they're like 30 something dollars. There's literally no need for that. So if you go to your local store where you get your pudding and sugar-free um, jello mixes, usually on the bottom there will be an unflavored gelatin and you'll see it's unflavored. And they usually just have packs. They're used for making like jello molds or whatever. It literally has zero carbs and it does the same thing as the unflavored beef gelatin that people buy for 30. You don't need that. You can spend, I want to say 89 cents at Kroger and the Walmart has their own. And because it's rarely used, you don't have to worry about it going bad. And the other thing I liked was that each packet was in its own little bag. So I didn't have to open the whole box just for a tablespoon. I just had to open up a packet. So little tidbits on saving money on buying gelatin as long as it's unflavored and on the back that there are zero carbs you're good to go so i wanted to make sure i shared that with you in the meantime i'm off to finish this cookie all right i hope you really enjoy the snickerdoodles